During this scene, we can see Vader looking back and forth during the torture and imminent death of his son. But what was he really thinking at this time? Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to read out the select passages I found to be insightful on Vader's thoughts and feelings during the ending scene in Return of the Jedi. It covers Vader's consciousness from the third and first person point of view to give us all more of an understanding of who Vader was, and ultimately, his conflict with Anakin Skywalker. The books that I'll be referencing today are The Rise and Fall of Darth Vader and the novelization of The Return of the Jedi. Our video begins just after this scene. Here. The Emperor scowled with a measurable displeasure, he said, If you will not be done, you will be destroyed. Still lying against the bridge railing beside the elevator shaft, Vader watched the Emperor extend his gnarled fingers and unleash blinding bolts of blue force lightning from his fingertips. The lightning struck Luke, who tried to deflect the crackling bands of energy but was so overwhelmed that his body crumpled to the floor. No, Vader thought. No, not like this. As the Emperor continued to strike Luke with his barrage of Sith lightning, Vader struggled to his feet. One leg was broken and the other wasn't working right. Moving awkwardly, he shifted his bulk to stand beside his master. On the floor, Luke writhed in agony and was on the verge of death. As he groaned, Vader watched Luke curl into a fetal position. As the Emperor hurled an even more staggering wave of lightning at his victim, Vader had no doubt that Luke was about to die. His son screamed, Not just my son. The Emperor unleashed another round of lightning. Or Padme's son. Luke screamed louder. But my son, who loves me. Luke's clothes began to smolder as his body involuntarily spasmed. Suddenly, Vader realized that he was no longer concerned about his personal future. He knew he could not stand by and allow the Emperor to kill Luke. And then, in a moment, something changed. Perhaps he remembered something he heard in his youth a long time ago. An ancient prophecy of the Chosen One who would bring balance to the Force. Perhaps the vague outlines of someone named Shmi and a Jedi named Qui-Gon struggled to the surface of his consciousness. The most powerful, the most repressed thought of all could have emerged from the darkness. Padme and her undying love for someone he once knew well. And despite all the terrible, unspeakable things he'd done in his life, he suddenly realized he could not stand by and allow the Emperor to kill their son. And in that moment, he was no longer Darth Vader. He was Anakin Skywalker. At that instant, Vader sprang up and grabbed the Emperor from behind, pinning Palpatine's underarms to his torso. Weaker than he'd ever been, Vader had lain still these last few minutes, focusing his every fiber of being on this one concentrated act. The only action possible, his last if he failed. Ignoring pain, ignoring his shame and his weakness, ignoring the bone-crushing noise in his head, he focused solely and sightlessly on his will. His will to defeat the evil embodied in the Emperor. Palpatine struggled in the grip of Vader's unfeeling embrace, his hand still shooting bolts of malign energy out in all directions. In this will, flailing the light ripped across the room, tearing into Vader. The Dark Lord fell again, electric currents crackling down over his head, over his cape, and into his heart. He held the Wailing Emperor over his head, and with a final spasm of strength, hurled him into the abyss. Palpatine screamed as his body plummeted down the shaft. Still trapped within Darth Vader's armor, Anakin collapsed at the shaft's edge, but heard the explosion of dark energy that consumed the falling Emperor. Hearing his own breathing as a rasping rattle, Anakin knew that Vader's helmet respiratory apparatus was broken. Luke crawled to his father's side and pulled the Dark Lord away from the edge of the chasm to safety. Both of them lay on the floor, entwined in each other, too weak to move, too moved to speak. What did you all think about this passage? It provides a lot more insight into Vader's thoughts and his personality. It also confirms more of my theory regarding how Vader suppressed Anakin and how they were actually two very different people. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you'd like for me to make a video on Luke's thoughts while he was being electrocuted by the Emperor, let me know and I can do that for tomorrow. Thank you so much once again, everyone. I really appreciate every single one of you for watching these videos, and I couldn't be doing this without you. I hope you're all having a great day or night wherever you are watching this in the galaxy. And until tomorrow's episode of Star Wars Theory, remember, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, the Force will be with you always. Now, fulfill your destiny.
Mr. 